Hey everybody, doing a quick video analysis here for Abe. Abe had sent in his video um, about a week ago, so just wanted to get to it now. This is a free video analysis. Free video analysis I normally get to usually within a week or two after they're sent in. Um, if you are looking for a video analysis and you need it quickly, I would definitely recommend doing one of the paid video analysis sessions that are on the uh, Elite Throws Coaching website. You can see that link in the description box down below. Um, those I get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. So basically the ones that you pay for, they go to the front of the line. The ones that are free that people send in daily, I get to those when I can get to those all based around my schedule. But let's start taking a look here at Abe. So very similar to the video analysis that I did the other day uh, that you'll find under this channel. A lot of the stuff going on with Abe's throw that he needs to work on is happening in the back of the circle. So if we take a look in the back of the circle, I want you to really keep an eye on the discus and the relationship of the discus to his right hip, essentially the upper body to the lower body. Remember, the upper body and the lower body are in a race against each other. You never want the upper body to lose, I'm sorry, to win that race. You always want the lower body to win the race. So that right hip needs to always be running in front of that right arm. So you can start to see here, we're doing something I don't like, which is pulling that discus back more than once. So why don't I like that? Let me show you. Essentially, Abe's getting ready to throw the discus one time. But it looks like in this position here, he's already brought the, the, the hand holding the discus in front of his right hip once. And then he pulls it behind the right hip and in front of the hip again. And now he's getting ready to throw. What do you think is going to happen? That discus is going to come right up in front of the hip again. So instead of having that discus pulled back all the way like it is here, now you see his right hip is pointing down the right sector line. His right hand is pointing down the, the uh, right sector line. So he is separated right now, about a 90 degree separation. I'd like to see the discus a little bit higher. That may make separation even easier, get you even more separation in the back. But what happens is the hand and the upper body start to come around before the feet move. So when his right foot comes off the ground right here, what's going on? The discus is catching up to the right hip. And you can see right about here, the discus is now even with the right hip. So right now, the lower body is no longer winning the race. And when we get to the middle of that circle, you can see what's going on. That discus is very low by his hip. He's kind of leaning over, falling into the middle, and that discus is by his right hip. So now when he lands, he's off balance because of Stuff we're going to talk about in a minute. But now the discus is way low by his hip. See how close it is? Instead of having that discus way up here, it's way too low. We get a big right sector fall. Okay, so what's going on? Well, first things first, let's start moving out of the back of the circle earlier. When you're in this position here, I'd love to see the discus higher if you think a 90 degree angle at the armpit or if you want to think parallel to the ground, that's another good way of kind of cueing yourself. Keep the arm up. The arm should be parallel to the ground. That's going to put the discus further away from your body, from your hip, and it's going to help the discus to stay behind the hip. So that would be my first thing. Start in the back of the circle. Keep the discus higher and keep the discus back behind the hip. Start moving the lower body earlier. Don't lose separation. Okay, from here, we need you to get around your left side a lot better. So if you were to draw a straight line up your left shin, you could kind of see that the line would come right here past your head. As we go to move, you're not getting around that left side. You're kind of falling into the middle. You're a little off balance. You know, Like I said in the last video analysis, if I were to just have you try to stand in this position, you would fall over. 
There's no way you could stand in that position. The reason you're not falling over when you throw is because you're moving. It's easier to keep your balance. But if I were just to tell you, hey, go stand in this position in the middle of the circle, you would fall right over. You would fall right into the middle of that circle. You'd fall right onto your side. And that's what's going on here is you're falling. You're off balance and you're falling and you're not doing a good job of pivoting and keeping your weight on that left foot. And that's what's causing this kind of bad position, this uncontrolled falling to the middle. And those two things, that falling to the middle and that discus being low and in front of the hip is what's causing this bad release at the end. Those two things are adding up in the back of the circle and they multiply as you go through the circle so that you have a bad finish at the front of the circle. Okay, You've got that heel-toe position that's not good. You should have your left foot back here. Not on the left sector line, but a little bit closer to the left sector line. That left arm should be a lot longer, reaching back for 12 o'clock, reaching for the back of the circle. All that stuff here, you can't really correct until you get more control in more separation in a better position in the back of the circle. All right, so that's what I want you to work on, Abe. It sounds like a lot of stuff, but it's really not a lot of stuff. You just have to fix one or two little things. Just create some better habits in the back of the circle, and you're going to be throwing straight down the middle with a lot more distance, a lot more power, a lot more speed. So just one more time, take that discus, get it up higher, and make sure you pin that discus back behind your right hip the whole time. Don't let that discus fall and get in front of the hip. Keep that discus up and back behind you. And then work on balancing better, getting around that left side better. There's a uh, video underneath this channel talking about proper timing in the discus in the back of the circle. If you just do a quick search underneath my channel, you'll be able to pop it right up. That's going to teach you a couple of drills that you can do to help get more weight on the left, to help you get in a better position on that left. And those two things together, man, we're going to be adding a lot of distance to your throws. So not a bad looking throw. You definitely have a couple little things to clean up that's going to add to a much better position and a lot more power and some further distance. So keep up the good work. Good luck. You said you've got a big meet coming up in a couple weeks. So good luck on your meet. And uh, let me know. Just leave me a comment in the uh, comment section down below. Let me know if you have any questions.